Here's a quick video of the solution to problem number 11 from the derivative review. This in the book is uh, 3.r.42, I guess, uh, asking for the equation of the line tangent to the curve. Um, so this is a, a bread and butter um, derivative application problem that um, is a little artificial because it's not really clear why the, we need the equation of the line of tangency as opposed to just the slope. But it is um, it is something that we we can use in one of the optional problems later on, where we uh, use something called Newton's method to find roots of uh, of functions using uh, our knowledge about derivatives. So anyway, so there's a purpose to it, but um, it doesn't really uh, matter for answering this question. So we we want the equation of a line, and so we can get that if we know a point on the line and we know the slope of the line. And notice that we're being told a point, the point 3, 1. So that means that all we need to know to finish the problem is the slope and then how to turn that into the equation of a line. So we know that the slope of a line comes from the derivative. And so if we uh, set this up so that with our notation, we can just say um, that f of x is referring to the function 4x over x squared plus 3, then we can use the quotient rule to find the derivative of that. Uh, that's not enough room. Hang on. Let's put it down below. Uh, F prime is going to come from the quotient rule. The quotient rule says that it's the denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. And as always, you'll notice that I don't actually do it. I just write down what my rule says to do, and then I'll do it on my next line. So x squared plus 3, the derivative of 4x, this part right here, derivative of 4x is 4. And I'll just cruise along. Now I'm here. This guy, derivative of x squared plus 3, I can do that. That's 2x. And I still have the x squared plus 3 squared in the denominator. But, uh, so that's the, the derivative. And the derivative gives us the formula for the slope. Um, but we want a particular slope at a particular point. And the point is the point um, 3, 1. So when x is 3 and y is 1. So to find the slope at that point, I'm just going to evaluate. I'll put it up here f prime of 3. In other words, put the x coordinate in place of x in the derivative, and that will tell you the slope of the curve at x equals 3. Um, you, I, I would recommend, if all you're trying to do is put a number in, there's no point to do algebra here. Just go ahead and put 3 in for x. Um, and so you'll have 12 here. 4 times 3 is 12. 2 times 3 is 6. So you can just put all the numbers in, and um, I have it on another piece of paper, so I don't have to take up too much space on here, but it looks like it comes out to be negative 1, 6. And again, all I'm doing is putting 3 in for x all the way throughout this whole thing. It ends up being like negative 24 over 144, and that simplifies to negative 1, 6. So having that, um, the equation of a line, um, if we're given, a, uh, given the slope, which we have, and we know a point on the line, which we have, then the equation of the line can come from what we call point-slope form. Point-slope form will look like this. y minus the given, oh, good lord. y minus the given y-coordinate. So we're told y equals 1 when x is 3. So I'm trying to use this, but I'm having a hard time focusing. Is the slope times x minus the given x-coordinate. So this is the equation of my line. The reason that this works, um, well, obviously we have uh, the negative 1, 6 times x. We've learned lots and lots of times that that's how you get the slope. It's the number in front of the x. So that puts the negative 1, 6 with the x. But notice that we're sort of cheating because if you plug in 1 for y and x for 3, you get 0 equals negative 1, 6, 0, which is definitely true. So we're sort of cheating by picking an example of something that's 0 equals 0. So we're picking an example of something that's satisfied by 3, 1 very easily without having to do a lot of work. The problem is that to put the answer here, it almost certainly wants you to put that in slope-intercept form. It doesn't say that, so I'm not 100% sure, but, I, but I, I'll bet I'm right. 
So to put it in slope intercept form, that means I need to simplify my answer, which means to multiply this through and then to add one to both sides. That's extra algebra that you're only doing because the online homework system is probably going to be a little picky about um, the way it's written. So if I do that, if I multiply out the right-hand side, it'll be negative 1 6 x. Negative 1 6 times minus 3 is plus a half. And the minus 1 that was here, if I move it over to the side, is plus another 1. Plus 1. So y is minus 1 6 x plus a half plus 1 is 1 and a half, so 3 halves. So this would be my final answer in slope-intercept form. It's definitely worth at least checking the, that you didn't mess up the point. Uh, if you put 3 in for x, you get negative 1 half plus 3 halves equals 1. So it does check out that if you put 3 in for x, you get 1 for y.